Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Muhammad Mawiza bin Muda Bistari and my matrix number is 20734. Today we would like to present our project with the topic rocket. This is our table of content. Each of us will explain more detail about the application and the analysis of the thermodynamic in the rocket. Okay. Rocket is one of the humankind's achievement and it comes in many different shapes and size, but all the rockets are propelled by engine that produce thrust. I will explain about some steady flow engineering device in the rocket engine. Firstly, is pump in the rocket engine. So by having the mixings of fuel and oxidizer might be a sufficient engine, but we need to increase the velocity at which it goes out. So to increase the flow rate of the fuel and the oxidizer to, the, to enter the combustion chamber, we need to increase the pressure. So the only device that increase the pressure of the fluid is pumps. Pumps are the device that used to increase the pressure of the fuel and oxidizer that give the engine more rapid combustion. The second one is heat exchanger. Heat exchanger is a device where two moving fluid streams exchange heat without mixing. So the, hot, the heat of the hot gases is used to convert the liquid oxygen into the gaseous oxygen. And the lastly is the nozzle. A nozzle is a device that increase the velocity of a fluid at the expense of pressure. A rocket nozzle is shaped converging diverging. So the converging section of the nozzle will accelerate the fluid to a subsonic flow while the diverging section or the expansion area, it's meant to further accelerate the combustion much more to supersonic flow so that the rocket can produce the high velocity thrust needed to launch the rocket. That's all from me. I will pass to the second presenter. Thank you. Thank you. I am Jay Raj and I'm going to present on the application of first law of thermodynamics in the rocket. Firstly, I'm going to explain the law generally. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or damaged, where it can only change forms. It is an expression of the conservation of energy principle. From this equation, we can know that the net change in the total energy is equal to the difference between work done on the system and the heat flow out of the system. In rocket engine, kinetic energy needed to rotate the turbine to produce work. Now, I'm going to explain how the kinetic energy is produced from this diagram. In rocket engine, rocket engine is used in rocket to create greater thrust force needed for the rocket to be launched. There are two pumps in the system. The first one is the oxygen pump and the second one is the fuel pump. Pump can inhale the propellant of low pressure and raise its pressure and send to the combustion chamber and the pump is driven by the gas turbine. As the fuel and liquid oxygen have passed through the turbine, work is done against the blades that are attached to the shaft, which is produces kinetic energy. The kinetic energy helps the shaft to rotate and the turbines produce work. Next, I'm going to explain on the conservation of energy on how rocket creates the thrust force. The energy needed for the thrust force comes from the chemical energy from the fuel which is converted into the heat energy and work. The heat energy gained from the combustion from the fuel where the breaking of chemical bonds happen. Higher heat energy is required to create higher thrust force to launch the rocket. So this is how the principle of conservation of energy happens in rocket. Next, Azri will explain on application of second law of thermodynamic in rocket. Okay, thank you. I am Muhammad Azri bin Muhammad Nasib. Uh, I'm going to present on the application of second law of thermodynamics in rocket. Entry transfer will only happen by transferring heat from a hotter body to a colder body. In a natural process, it is impossible to a colder body to dissipate heat to surrounding which is hotter. Therefore, for the reverse process, it requires special devices such as refrigerator and heat pump to transfer heat from low temperature to high temperature. The second law of the thermodynamics can be applied to the heat exchanger in the rocket engine. From the figure shown, gaseous nitrogen and liquid oxygen are the colder body, while hot gas is a hotter body. Heat is transferred from the hot gas, resulted in the production of heated and expanded gaseous nitrogen and gaseous oxygen which then will be injected to the combustion chamber for combustion process with fuel. For the second, 
uh, every energy consists of quality and quantity. So in the real world process, the process will only happen in the way of decreasing quality of energy. There will always some losses occur. This shows that the efficiency of any energy transfer process will never reach 100%. This law can be applied to the combustion chamber of the rocket engine. In the combustion chamber, only some of the energy produced by fuel through combustion will be converted to work output, while most of the energy produced is wasted to surrounding in the form of heat. That's all for me, and I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you, Azri. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Sharifuddin Ben Shafri and my metric number is 204304 and I am going to explain about the thermodynamics analysis in rocket. As we learn in thermodynamics, we can know the parameter of a fluid given that we have some other parameters of the fluid. For example, if we know pressure and temperature of a fluid, we can know its specific density, its specific volume and then also its enthalpy. And also in thermodynamics, we have some devices that were created basically on the principle of thermodynamics, such as the heat exchanger, the compressor, turbine, mixing chambers, and others. In a rocket engine, we have the palm, heat exchanger, and nozzle as the main components of a rocket. And these are the three devices that we are going to analyze. Having the nozzle, heat exchanger, and palm drawn like this with some of its parameters, we can use the table of thermodynamics and also the energy equation to find the remaining parameters. For example, if we have the velocity exit from the nozzle to be 2,300 meter per second to propel the rocket into the air and also the pressure at 3.5 megapascal, using the table and also the energy equation, we can find the initial parameters for the uh, fluid entering the nozzle. In this case, the fuel fluid. Uh, and these parameters at the entrance of the nozzle is going to be the exit parameter of the heat exchanger which connect to the pump and at the pump we have we can find the work that we need in order for the pump to increase the pressure of the fuel to the desired um, pressure at the heat exchanger so all these are connected and given the parameters that we find from these calculations we can use the information to design our rocket engine and also we can choose the material that we need in order for it to hold the pressure and other information. So that's all from us. Thank you very much.